thank you for coming for and joining us today on Mental Health Matters. We will be discussing community care with your host, George, and moderator, myself, Eva. We hope you join us each second and fourth Thursday at 11.30 for a new topic and conversation. So we'd like to talk a little bit about SE Thrive. SE Thrive leads South Carolinians to stability by providing innovative and efficient access to quality of life resources. Basically, we help people where they need and meet them where they are. If you could, um, use the chat and tell us who we have in, in this uh, form. So tell us a little bit about yourselves. I see we have Harold and Barbara Wells. Hi, Ms. Barbara from Low Country Hope Center. We're glad to have you. Thank you. And we are recording um, this, this form. So I ask that everyone please put yourselves on mute. As we are facing a once in a generation crisis with this COVID-19 pandemic, it's more important than ever to center humi human communi communication and connection and part of a movement for community care. This means that while we are experiencing physical distancing from our communities, the compassion and love we have for each other remain strong. We must remember that during the most devastating times and moments, community care and not hyper-individualism is what allows us to prevail. So not only Sumter strong, Columbia strong, Spartanburg strong, but South Carolina strong and America strong right now is what we need. What are some resources, George, to make our community strong or neighborhood strong at this point? So um, one of the things that, uh, that I've joined is uh, Nextdoor. And uh, it's a ability for us uh, to stay in touch with our neighbors. Uh, and I've been on it for a while. One of the things I was using Nextdoor for was um, do I, can I get advice on a plumber or somebody uh, to uh, a plumber, tree cutter, whatever it may be. But now, uh, yesterday, uh, one of the things that somebody suggested was that we um, uh, get a food truck and uh, have, have a time where we can all get together uh, in the neighborhood and uh, have time uh, speaking with each other. So it's, uh, it's pretty neat. But the other things that are very close to us, one is uh, SC Thrive and our 1-800 number. It's a way for you. To, you can call our 1-800 number. We'll have that for you in just a moment. 
uh, but you can call us and uh, we have the ability to plug you into resources. Uh, one of the things that you're going to see at the end of this uh, presentation is a uh, website. Uh, it's uh, South Carolina Community Emergency Response Teams. And many of the counties in our state have a, a program where you can learn how to uh, be a neighbor to all your neighbors in an emergency. Uh, the power goes off. What are some things that I can have in my house? Uh, you're in a rural area and uh, there's no power, so there's no water. It just teaches you about taking care of yourself and your family. And of course, one of the things that uh, Eve and I are going to talk about are other community resources, such as uh, the churches uh, all across our state. So, George, right. just because we're social distancing, and does that mean we need to be distancing totally, like emotionally or like not coming out of our house being solely isolated? You know, um, if I take this mask and put this mask on, you, I've, you, I've lost a valuable way to communicate with you because now you can't see my smile. And uh, so one of the things that we lose when we're in a grocery store or when we're out somewhere where we're trying to maintain distance, we can't see each other's smile. And you know, your smile can light up a room, uh, but we, we can always say hello to people. Uh, we can speak to them in the aisles of the grocery store. I, you know, one of the, this has really impacted um, my family uh, because obviously as being in public safety, uh, there, I have the same uh, mentality as other health care givers that we don't want to bring some things home. And uh, my mother-in-law is, it, it, is at that age uh, and has some of those variables that she doesn't want to uh, get out of And uh, so we really need to be cognizant of the fact that we still need to have interaction with people. We still need to fill their cup and we need to fill our cup. That's awesome, George. So I'm putting questions in the chat and hopefully we can have some interaction that way um, because we are recording. Everyone, please mute yourselves. However, um, the question I have for the form is how can you show kindness to others while physical distancing during COVID-19? And one, as y'all are typing and putting in your chat, um, it, you need to be cognizant of your neighbors. You need to be, for instance, uh, there was a time when I wasn't cognizant about my neighbors. And I had uh, two, uh, I, I had a, a neighbor across from me uh, that was a, of a senior age. Uh, my neighbor to the right of me was of a senior age. And, uh, and, th and then my neighbor uh, to my left was also of a senior age. And uh, I, I was hesitant. I didn't want to step out and, uh, and communicate with these folks all the time. And uh, it, it's, it's not a good thing to do. Uh, we need to know who our neighbors are. And they need to know that there's somebody that they can turn to uh, any time, day or night. Uh, there are all kinds of things that can, uh, that can go on. And uh, one, of the, uh, one of the situations that really is a stressor now for seniors and people our age and younger is they lose internet, so they lose contact with the outside, and that's a that's a big stressor. So, as individuals, and individuals love human connectivity, and we love to interact and give hugs and smile. Um, loneliness plays a big factor when isolating. 
what can we do as individuals to get away from, even though we're isolating, to help one another? What are the ways we can strengthen our community? We, you're going to run into people today and you have no idea what they're going home to. Um, some people, uh, they may have lost a spouse. Uh, they, they may have lost uh, a, a family member. Um, and so they're going home to an empty house. And uh, that's, a, that's a tough place to be in, uh, is to be constantly, especially in this day and time, going home to, to a place where uh -huh. there's nobody to turn to, there's nobody to talk to. Um, there's a great uh, program on, it's being done across the nation where people are encouraged to reach out to their neighbors and say, hey, uh, I'm going to the grocery store, can I bring you back anything? Um, and, and you can communicate that via text so you don't have to violate their space or I've noticed that in Sumter we have a lot of nursing homes and um, the teenagers have posted that they're becoming uh, pen pals with individuals inside the nursing home to get that connection that they're missing so um, I've known where at the Covenant House um, they've actually done parades. So like on for Memorial Day, instead of the individuals not seeing their family and not interacting, they've had car parades come by and, and wave and um, it's been very interactive. You know, isn't, wasn't it so cool during graduation time to hear the cars honking and, and see them going by. And then it's so awesome uh, to be outside and uh, you'll see a bunch of cars go by and people are carrying balloons because they're celebrating somebody's birthday. Um, it, it is just incredible. And I love writing cards. Um, I, I love uh, in, in my uh, church, uh, we, uh, are able to stay up on people's needs. And so I love writing notes to people, whether it be an email or a card that goes by mail. Um, I, that's just sort of one of my love languages is writing to people. And I know this might be dating myself, but I know when I was a teenager, um, internet was like the new thing. So my mom didn't have internet in our house. So she gave me a cell phone. And with that cell phone, we were actually having phone parties to where I would call two people, then those two people would call two people. And we were able to have like 15 people on a phone call and we could hear each other's voice. We would hear the happiness. The Sometimes we could tell when people weren't feeling the best because it said that you can hear a smile when somebody answers the phone. So you could also do a phone party. You could do a Zoom party. You could have book clubs on Zoom, Facebook. Um, you can even, if you have an iPhone, I don't have an iPhone, but if you have an iPhone, you can FaceTime people. Um, if you have an Echo Dot, um, you can communicate with somebody that lives in California. Just say Echo Call so-and-so. The videos... Um, you can send videos through the phone. There are a lot of ways that you can keep connected with those that that are not in your neighborhood, but in your family, as well as going and knocking on somebody's door. If you notice somebody, um, grass is high, and normally they would mow their grass every two weeks, and all of a sudden the car hasn't moved, the, the light on the outside of the house is still on, um, and you haven't seen anybody in a couple of days, knock on the door that you never know. That person might be in the hospital and mm. might not have anybody looking in on their house. So, so we need to stay connected. That's really big. Um, you know, I, people are very concerned about their privacy these days, but my next door neighbor, um, their son actually programmed an echo 
so that uh, if if uh, my neighbor did happen to fall, um, they were uh, the son taught taught them how to call for help over the echo dot. Um, things like what we're doing today, you can get a Zoom account uh, and uh, a free account that uh, is good for 40 minutes. So um, one of the things that my wife has done with Zoom is stayed in touch with uh, all of her friends, uh, her, her tight uh, group, because typically we would get together with them uh, from time to time, but that's, uh, that's not possible because they live in other states. Um, I think that uh, the other big thing that we can do to, uh, when I first got involved with SC Thrive, I had no idea what the word self-care meant. And I have been so thankful for those two words, self-care. I told my wife this morning, I, I got on my bicycle for the first time in a while and I, um, I actually rode 10 miles, and uh, I actually told my wife today how uh, freeing that was to, to ride. Uh, I have been, I, like everyone on this call, we've all been so focused on everything going around us, and I, I'm one of these fellows that's interested in doing everything for others, but caring for myself. So we really have to be uh, taking care of ourselves and taking time out for ourselves. And I'm so glad that you all have uh, taken an hour out of your day to, to be with us because uh, this is a perfect example of us having a conversation and then us having a conversation and then you after today having a conversation with other people. And one of the things that Bar that, uh, Eva told you is we're recording this so you can actually share this recording in the next week or so with other people uh, because they may be a George like me they may be somebody that knows how to help everybody but themselves and I know for myself I'm I'm a veteran and I served almost 15 years in the military and I never did self-care because in the military, you're taught to work as a team, to get the mission done, and it's service before self. So it took me a while to get what they call self-care and actually take care of myself. Now I'm, I'm getting more accustomed to it, but I still take care of my family before me. And I think for moms, that's a little harder to do when we have family and work. Um, we tend to take care of everything else and then we're the last one on the list before everything gets done. So laundry gets done, the ironing, um, the hair, putting out the kids' clothes, helping them with homework, doing dinner, making sure everybody got lunch for the next morning and making sure everybody's alarm clock is done. And before you know it, almost the whole day is over and you have yet to take care of yourself. So mom's out there dads out there please take care of yourself like they say on the airplane put your mask on before you put somebody else's mask on and we do have some answers to the questions that i put in the post um george so i'll go over that right quick so okay. the first question that i put in the post is um How can you show kindness to others while dealing with COVID-19? And some people said exchange phone numbers and check on others. Checking on loved ones, friends, neighbors via calls and text message. Lizeth said sending them a care package. That's huge for some people because some people, um, especially those who are far away from home, attending college, deployed, um, just moved to a new, a new state, just starting a new job, they might not have connections. So if you send a care package, a care package, that could be really big, especially if they are from a different state and they can't get what they love, like that special 
a candy coated jelly bean that only you can get in that state, but you send that one care package and you just brighten up their whole day. Cause now they get, got little memories of home coming and warming their hearts. That's right. And you know, uh, one thing that uh, we talked about yesterday is now we can do random acts of kindness in if our relative lives in Montana, uh, we can do random acts of kindness from here because we can find out a grocery store that delivers to them uh, in their area and uh, actually have non-perishables delivered to them. So we don't even have to leave our house. We don't have to go to the post office or anything. We can literally do a random act of kindness and have things sent, uh, nice things sent to our, to our friends and other people. And um, I guess for me, a random act of kindness, somebody did that for me today. Um, I actually have one of my friends from where I used to live in Goldsboro, South Carolina on today. So hi, Kita. Um, that warmed my heart because I miss where I live. So hi. I want to cry, but I'm not. <laughs> Um, this is awesome. So, yeah, that's that that really touched me because I don't think I've been back to Goldsboro, North Carolina, to stay in ten years. So, seeing her face on here warmed me up. It made my day. That's great. This is awesome. Another another question I put in the post was, "What have you done for yourself this week?" So. Kita said, have quiet time. Cherry said she changed her hairstyle. Barbara said, walking at 6.30 in the morning, in passing and definitely social distancing, meeting a lot of neighbors and dogs. Um, I know in our neighborhood, it's, it's a military retiree neighborhood. So from time to time, we might see signs in the yard saying for sale. Or we might um, see new neighbors in the neighborhood that we've never met before. And with this social distancing, it's actually making us and forcing us to get to know everybody in our neighborhood. Our subdivision is growing. So therefore, the more our, our subdivision grows, the more we get to know our neighbors. Therefore, our community gets tighter. And now we have a Facebook page. We're going on there and um, you might hear that um, the neighbor down the street needs some sugar. Well, it's like five people walking down to the house now with sugar. So it's awesome that people are communicating during this physical distancing and connecting in the ways that normally we wouldn't do because we'd be on the go all the time. That's right. Uh, uh, my uh, neighbor, I, when all this started, uh, one of the things that was uh, in short supply was yeast, so people could bake. It was uh, sort of funny. I was walking the dogs one day, and uh, this Stella stops me and says, hey, are those your dogs? And I said, yeah, they're my dogs. Well, usually somebody else is walking them. And I said, yeah, that's that's my sister. So it's, it's amazing how how people are uh, have their eyes wide open these days. It's, anyway. So we've talked about this, taking care of each other, checking on, are you alone? Um, with, this, the, with this dynamic of COVID-19 and the numbers going up, the numbers might be going down in some states. Um, we just need to make sure that everyone that we know or might come across feels compassion at this point. We need to make sure that everybody, we share kindness. Um, the times are the times, not going to get into that, but being kind goes a long way. It distresses you as well as it can make somebody's day a little bit better. Um, community care is not just being there for others in in a, in a way um, of that you think you're helpful. 
it's also about being there for people without them having to take the initial step to reach out or ask for help. So like, um, I can give a personal story myself. Um, me and my brother were both military. Um, and he just lost his wife a couple weeks ago. He lives in Minnesota. I live in South Carolina. So I want to be there. He wants me there, but because of COVID-19, it can't happen. So what he was able to do was he was able to reach out to me and I was able to reach out to all of my family and virtually through, through, um, a virtual link they had at the funeral home, we were able to be there, maybe not hold his hand, but we were there to give our love and support for my brother during his time of bereavement. Yeah, it's, um, you know, we can do something um, that will be big for generations to come by us exhibiting random acts of kindness and by us reaching out to people, you know, our kids are watching all the time, regardless of how old they are. So we're actually planting a seed because they're seeing what we're doing. You know, we, we've been looking back at what happened in 1918 when there was a situation like this. And uh, now people will be looking back at 2020 and saying, well, what did they do in 2020? And your, our families, our, our uh, children and uh, that will be able to say, well, you know, my mother or dad, they did this, so. George, what does compassion mean to you? You know, uh, compassion is, is huge. Uh, that word, uh, that word is a, it's like a pancake. There's two sides to it. Um, I need to be compassionate to others. Uh, I need to remember that, uh, somebody, uh, this may be the first time that they got out, uh, being courteous and making sure that I'm not clogging up, you know, I'm a big guy and it's easy for me to clog up an aisle of a grocery store when it's easy for me with a grocery cart to clog up uh, the aisle going to the register. And so, you know, I, I just need to be compassionate to people and uh, always give them uh, the next uh, spot in line or just do, do little things. But the other thing is I need to be compassionate to myself and uh, I need to, I need to realize that there are going to be times during the day that I'm going to fumble and uh, there was a quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. And for two years, he had the most fumbles of anybody in the NFL. And the next year, uh, they won the Super Bowl. And great. He said, I learned how to keep the ball closer to my heart. So there are just a lot of things that we can do for people. We have to you know, in the workplace, we have to, we don't know what kind of baggage people are carrying. Uh, when we're out in, in whatever, in the parking lot, wherever it is, we have to realize that people are, are carrying a lot, around a, a lot of baggage and, and we need to show compassion as much as possible. I asked the audience, what does compassion mean to them? And Amber Leak said to have a sense of understanding, truly treat others the way you would want to be treated. And I like that meaning. I, I like that definition. Um, for me, it, it, in the military, um, for me, I had a you have to do it attitude. In the civilian world, it's not a have to do it attitude. So I have to give myself compassion every day because I it has been ingrained in me for 15 years. You have to do it this way. You have to do it. Um, there is no ifs and buts. It must get done. Um, and I think that's good in that sense. However, now I'm a mom. And then I was a mom too, but I was also a military member. So the stress level was different and the stress level is different now. But now I'm a mom of four teenagers, three of which are going to college. 
I still have a husband. I still have to work. And also on top of that, my mom is here. So I have to be compassionate to myself as well as compassionate to my teenagers that are growing up and they're trying to figure out what's going on in life. And I'm the mom and I want to tell them, hey, listen to me because I've been there, but I also have to be compassionate and know that they're going to find their way just like I did and not putting them in a box because I think compassion also comes to a point where it's, you have to be compassionate to let the birds fly, if I can use that. Um, Cause although you don't want to see your babies fail at anything, failure is also, is also a good lesson to learn. It helps us be more resilient. We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. <laughs> yes, George. So um, this is Eva made up this illustration, and it's really awesome. Um, you know, when when I was a kid and uh, would be out on the playground, I'm showing my age. Uh, the the kids uh, would uh, the person that you were on the uh, oh my gosh the, the seesaw. seesaw with yeah with the person that you were on the seesaw with they would jump off and uh, so you would just land bam right on the ground and uh, as I as I uh, got older in life uh, somebody would say uh, so what's going on. Well, I jumped off the seesaw and my wife is not happy. And uh, so, you know, there are so many things that are going to happen uh, to us. And man, we're, we can we can fall hard on that on this seesaw of life. Um, you know, every day uh, there are families that uh, they end up with uh, somebody in their family that tests positive for COVID. Um, they get concerned about social distancing and this right now, the amount of uh, pressure that we are under, uh, trying to figure out about schools, um, that's, that, that's a, that's a big, a big issue. Yes, it is a big issue. Um, especially when you have everyone life as it was and then we go to normalcy from normalcy to the new norm which is getting normal because normally they say anything you do for 21 days becomes a habit so we're already in that habit mode and survival mode of trying to negotiate what will work and what won't work however we need to remind ourselves that everybody experiences the stresses of life a little bit different. So we need to, not only do we need to be compassionate, but we need to offer grace. Grace for ourselves and grace for others. It's one of my favorite words that uh, I, I didn't learn till later on in life. One of the places that I learned it was I finished my college degree later in life and I went to college um the college during the day is uh is all women but they allow men at night and i had a lot of uh, uh peers uh, that uh they were single moms and i really learned uh, i had my eyes wide open about what grace is all about so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to watch a quick video about kindness. Our fondest memories likely involve those who are kindest to us. So why aren't we kind more often? It's a tricky question to answer. Is it difficult? Expensive. Kindness can be expressed through a smile, a thoughtful word, or a helping hand. 
but the magnitude of these small gestures can't be underestimated. The effects are experienced by everyone involved. Those who simply witness it feel the same warmth and comfort as those who offer or receive the act. And they can all be inspired to practice and spread kindness in their own lives and in the lives of others. This unique ripple effect is the power to change the way people see and experience the world. Through acts of kindness among friends and strangers, we all foster a more caring and civil society. Kindness can be the norm, not the exception. Pass it on. I, I can't uh, tell you how big that is. Um, I uh, had an opportunity the other day um, to be eating breakfast and uh, someone that I knew was in the same restaurant and uh, I was able to pick up their tab without them knowing it. And uh, you know that uh, those are just huge things that you know, maybe just for instance, you may just leave a a dollar at the drive through and tell the uh, person at the drive through this is for you. And uh, they're they're not, they're not going to expect uh, somebody working in the drive through They're not going to expect a tip. Uh, but how much of a surprise that is! Again, I know we've we've spoken so much about random acts of kindness, but. In life, unfortunately, we've gotten so adapted to uh, expectations. We've we've had expectations in our life, and uh, sometimes we set our, our expectations so high, and it can be disappointing to us. I'll talk to you some more about uh, some other things that you can do uh, in your uh, in your life. One of them is making lists. Um, you know, I got all addicted to computers. I got addicted to my cell phone. Oh, I can do this. I can make, I can do this in Todoist. It'll keep track of things for me. Um, but writing things down, getting back to writing down lists can be so freeing because, you know, our, the ability, our memory and our ability to remember things is, uh, it, it, it's we can all I, I've learned at 57 I can't multitask and I've actually reduced my um, amount of oops every day by not trying to multitask and just doing one thing at a time and uh, you know we I may go to the store and um, my wife said you know I need this and so I go in the store without a list well First of all, I spend $150 instead of 75 and then I may get home and my wife says, did you get the dark chocolate? Uh, did you bring the laundry powder? And I say, no, I, nope, no, I forgot. Well, uh, one of the things that we can do with our phone is we can actually take a picture of our to-do list. So that if I happen to misplace my to-do list between the house and the the house and the uh, store, uh, I've got a better chance because that that's going to happen. My dad would say I'd lose my head if it wasn't connected to my neck. That's a great tip. Also, you can use your phone um, as a reminder for appointments for your children. Um, I know my husband has an alert um, when to take his medicine. Um, he works 12 hours at a plant, so he might have to take his medicine at four o'clock a.m. every day, but sometimes his four o'clock a.m. he'll be at work. So he knows that, hey, when that alarm goes off, I need to take my medicine, I'm good to go. Um, also, you can use the app to adjust your hunger. So what do I mean by that? 
eat before you go grocery shopping. That way you don't end up with that hundred dollar cart and you miss out on that one thing your wife told you to do. I've done that. My mom lives with me. She tells me every time to pick up a box of insure. There's two times where I got yelled at as an adult by my mom. And that was because I did not have her insure. So now I make sure I eat before I go because I don't want to spend extra money. And that's also a stress that can be uh, kind of quelched is if you eat before you go, because normally if you don't and you're hungry, you end up with a cart full of extra stuff. Your wallet is saying no before you swipe that card. Then you have to stop and you have to go to a restaurant or go to um, a local uh, carryout store, get your meal, eat in the car, because now you, you ha arms have to be empty to go pick up what you need that you bought in the store. So now you got arm full of stuff. You walk into the house and your wife or your mom says, where's my item? And you're like, oh, oh, I spent an extra hour at the grocery store and I still didn't get it. So, yeah, it, it happens. But if you create list, it's, it works. We uh, did a form earlier this year called Finance Matters. And uh, Dave Ramsey uh, is one of the uh, authorities that we spoke mentioned and he says that we are more likely to spend uh, 10 to 20 percent more using a ATM card than we are when we use cash. And um, I told you about uh, going to school and, and learning the value of a dollar. And uh, so imagine uh, you spend more than you uh, intended. And uh, now that money that you had set aside for uh, your kids or maybe gasoline or medications, that, uh, that money's not there. So, um, but I will tell you one other thing uh, is uh, there is a uh, app called Headspace. And uh, originally Headspace was helping people with meditation and quiet time. And now, uh, Headspace is also helping you work out and just do simple exercises from a chair or whatever it may be. And it, it's, it's really pleasing to me. It actually gives me a random act of kindness because uh, it'll send me a note. Hey, I haven't seen you lately. Uh, why don't you, why don't you uh, take a moment for yourself? That's awesome. And there's also a, phone line it's called friendship phone line where seniors and disabled individuals that feel isolated or are missing a connection can call and their consultants and counselors that can get them the help that they need while having holding a conversation with them and if they need a referral they also do referrals to different agencies also And we do have um, another resource page. So we're going to just talk right now. And if you want, you can take, take a picture of the screen. Um, like George had said earlier, this will be on our YouTube channel and on Facebook. So you can share it on there once we upload it. So. I really appreciate what uh, Amber said. Um about uh, understand, ha have a sense of understanding, truly treating others the way you would want to be treated. I think um, that we are uh, learning so many things so fast. It's sort of like that expression of drinking out of a fire hydrant right now. There's so many things coming at us. One of the things that was said on the radio yesterday is that the number one stressor to kids and, and adults is social media. And uh, there, there are so many uh, examples for us every day of how important it is to, uh, to treat, uh, treat each other kindly. 
uh, Eva's just asked everybody about, uh, you know, what has COVID-19 taught you? And uh, the list is so long. One of the uh, things that we have expressed in previous, in a number of our forums is about journaling. And, I, you know, I encourage you to uh, journal uh, right now some of the things that you're, that COVID-19 is teaching you. Uh, there may be some things right now that you can't put your hands on. Um, you know, fortunately, paper products are starting to come back. Uh, but uh, again, there, there are things that we can do. Uh, we can actually put together our own home survival kits. And uh, we may be able to help. You know, I, I, have, a, I have a lawnmower. Uh, and uh, one of my neighbors, their, their grass was... Uh, catching it was growing high the other day I was on my on my way home and I don't typically stop for people on the side of the road anymore but st I stopped the, the woman was waving her hands in the air and and I stopped didn't know what I was rolling into but she had a her father had given her a gas can for that time that she may run out of gas and that day she had run out of gas so uh, we're, you're, if we've got our eyes and ears open, we're learning things every day about today. Amber said to, she's learned that in, to enjoy the simple things in life and to take care of her mental health. Uh, she, has, she has a therapy session weekly. Cherry said um, she's learned because of COVID-19, how important her friends and family are and how much uh, she likes her house because she didn't spend enough time at home. <laughs> it, it, is, uh, it is so big. You know, we have, I mean, the, the name of this whole program that we do is Mental Health Matters. And uh, so uh, somebody actually being on this call and saying, Hey, I, I have a go-to person. I've got a life coach. That, that's huge because we all need to know that it's okay not to be perfect. Uh, I, I assimilate it to, I'm like right now, one of my favorite things is eating peaches and my mother-in-law knows that. And she brings me peaches every week. Uh, but you know, the, out of six peaches, we may have one that's bruised. And that may be the one that if we were buying it, it got set aside. But we have to know that all of us have bruises and some of the bruises show and some of them don't. It's, uh, it's like we talked about earlier with loneliness, that there are people that are lonely inside. It's that duck on the water. That duck looks pretty and elegant, but underneath the water, they're paddling their, their tail off. Um, for me, I think COVID-19 has taught me how, how to give a true connection to somebody. And by that, I mean, um, my siblings are old enough to be my parents and my mom is old enough to be my grandmother. So for all of my life, I've treated my siblings like, ugh, I don't want to listen to you because you're trying to be my mom or dad. Well, now... I actually understand what connection means. Like call somebody, check on them, figure out who they are. Um, so I've really gotten to know my siblings, my mom, and I hope that my kids take the extra work that I put into their, to our relationships going forward when, when they're moved out and have a house of their own, how connections really mean a lot when you have to isolate and you can't make those drives to Maryland or drives to Minnesota. So I hope they take that. And I've actually made my house look like I live in it. I actually took boxes out and put pictures on my wall. So I'm very proud of myself on that one. One of the things that is easy to forget, especially on a program like this, um, we, I, uh, Eva's in Sumter. I'm here in uh, West Columbia right now, and it's easy for us to forget about the rural areas of South Carolina. 
and uh, I was I'm very fortunate that when I met my wife, um, my wife's family's from Allendale, so uh, I learned what it's like to be uh, 20 mile, 20 minutes, 30 minutes from a store, uh, and just things in general. Um, they lived on a 65 acre farm, and uh, so there weren't a lot of people around you. So we have to take into account that uh, there are people that are in suburban areas, urban areas, and rural areas. Uh, so we, we have to make sure that when we say next door, next door may not be right across the fence. Uh, it, it may uh, be a considerable distance. Yeah, my mom, when she says she has two phrases, next door means 20 miles out the way because she's from Virginia um, and then up yonder <laughs> means Maryland so I've had to like be in tune to her her uh, dialect and the way she short shortens her words and and now I get it like it makes sense so when you spend time and it doesn't have to be in the same room but just just talk to an elder and see how their life differs from yours and see how the sim how the similarities actually bring you guys together. That makes a difference. My mom is 82 and she never thought she'd have to live with a 38 year old. But now we're seeing that we have a whole lot in common and she's taught me some new ways of cooking. So it's interesting. One of our participants said uh, that they know, now know how to make do with what they have. And uh, I have a friend who said, you never dig a hole to fill a hole. Yep. It's sometimes, uh, but so we really appreciate that comment uh, that uh, sometimes we do need to, uh, the, what, we, what we have may, may be something we can get along with for, for a while. Yeah, and it's also, COVID-19 is also a good time to purge the things that you don't use. Like, now you have more time to actually be in your own dwelling. And those things that you have not touched in a year, two years, time for them things to find a new home. So you can downsize um, those things that you are making do with you might not need the extra TV in the bedroom if you're in the living room and now you don't turn on the TV in your bedroom. You read a book. So maybe you're I, learning new habits. I, um, I learned that my wife, uh, you know, there's a book called The Five, Five Love Languages and, uh, you know, how much it can mean to the people in the house when we go a night without the TV, uh, there's a incredible statement that's been made several times. Even when you're here, you're not here. Uh, so sometimes by us eliminating some of the things around us, uh, the cell phone, the TV and other things, and just having quiet time reading a book, uh, how much that may mean to the other people in the house, uh, because uh, we may be, the other night I was so attuned to what was going on on the TV, I wasn't listening to the people around me. And, and just being in tune to the people around you can be a random act of kindness. Because you never know, you're not doing it until somebody goes, hey, did you hear me? The, there are, um, we talked about uh, dethatching our house or getting rid of things in our house. One of the things that all of us uh, on this call can do today is to ask the question, uh, if I had one dollar to help someone with in my community, what would it be? Uh, Saturday, there's a group that's helping uh, re-roof a, a church in a uh, low-income area. Uh, there are, pe there are uh, people one thing that you have to understand about the homeless and the underprivileged is uh, they're only going to carry so many things with them during the, during the day. So uh, 
this is July, so as we get closer to the cold weather, uh, people that are veterans and other people that uh, uh, don't have a home uh, or they may have a home, but they don't have a lot of things, those coats that you have in your in your closet, uh, they're going to have a place to go uh, as we get closer to December. The uh, veterans are going to, they always have a big uh, call to arms during October so that we get lots of socks out uh, to people uh, all over uh, the county and all over our community. Thank you, George. It's been a pleasure uh, to be with you all today. And uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, we do want you to know that uh, we're here the first, uh, the second and fourth Thursday of uh, every month. Uh, in two weeks, we are going to be speaking about autism. And uh, for me as a uh, paramedic, uh, I, this is a uh, area that is very special to me because we cannot learn enough about autism and how it affects all ages of life. So uh, we hope that you'll tune in with us uh, the second uh, Thursday of August at 1130. And uh, even I'll be here with you. Uh, we want to remember our sponsors. Uh, we're very fortunate to have them. Uh, and uh, we also want you to know uh, that we do have our 800 number uh, that reaches out to our contact center. And if you don't remember anything else today, please know that right now uh, our organization, SC Thrive, is doing everything it can for people that are having trouble making uh, rent payments uh, and keeping keeping a roof over their head. So please don't uh, don't assume that everyone that has our number if you would please give out our number as much as possible to people, uh, because in the 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes it takes for us to do a, ask you a couple questions or ask your friend a couple questions, they may find out that there are funds available to help them in the situation that they're in right now. Have a great day. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.